soy el jefe de jefes, señores. Y les digo con gran... <coughs> Chief of Chiefs. Jefe de jefes, lo digo bien, bien, los tigres del norte. Jefe de jefes. What if I was to tell you that Chapo was really never the head of the Sinaloa cartel? They say that el jefe de jefes es el Mayo Zambada. I don't know. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? JC here with my shenanigans. You already know. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, leave, leave a message, some thumbs up, thumbs down, it doesn't matter. Just leave something. If you are part of my Ron Strong Familia, Raza, Crew, you already know what's up, man. Make sure you put some gas in that motherfucker before you pick me up because I am not going to jump out after they ram us and have to try and get home. Yes, I am wrong to strong. Happy Wednesday. You know what it is. Uh, you know, uh, I share my stories because I, I hope that I can help somebody or even just make somebody smile and laugh about the stupid decisions that we make sometimes when we are not em emotionally uh, stable or we're not mature enough to uh, recognize these mistakes. So I, I share them with hopes that maybe some somebody will watch something and you know not do what they're going to do or have a change of heart or it helps them when they go to do their time. But in no way, no form do I glamorize this cartel life, the gang life, the drug life, the kingpin life. Nothing. I share my experiences with you in hopes of you enjoying them. What's up, guys? Yes, 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 yes. We are talking about El Mayo Zambada today. You know, uh, his, his name first came up like on the DEA like radar. Back then, there wasn't really like the DEA, but it was like the United States radar of like the drug stuff they always know what's what's going on and it was 1977 when his names first appeared on u.s records but come on man he's mayo sambara he has been the only one to survive 50 years of drug trafficking with no arrest no arrest okay and it it, it, it was said that you know he was someone very important in the dope game in LA back in the early 80s. Where El Mayo remains now is, is unknown. I mean, the Sinaloa Mountains, if you have never been up there, it, it is it is crazy hard to try and find someone up there. Uh, the, the amount of green and just how the mountains go up and down and they're like, they have some deep areas where it's crazy. You would have to actually see it to to know what I'm talking about. But you know, uh, the U.S. has uh, put a reward on him, five million dollars. I think El Mayo should be in his 70s by now. Uh, some people say 72. Some people say 75. Um, he's up there. He's up there in age, and it's also they also say that he's not doing good in in his health. He's he's diabetic. Uh, all that stuff of him being up in the mountains might be hard to uh, get help one day. But being that rich, I'm pretty sure you have your own pretty your own hospital there. So <laughs> let's get into the nitty gritty stuff. Most people think that um, he sacrificed El Chapo to try and save his son from going to prison. You know, now there's a lot of books out there that are um, these uh, drug lords' uh, sons 
our writing and putting together. You know, uh, Vicentillo was um, she worked with a with a he worked with a writer, uh, and they put together a book. There's a lot of other books uh, now that you know um, explain a little bit more of what was going on through this whole ordeal of the trial with El Chapo and everything. A lot of people, it wasn't just Vicentillo who collaborated. There was a lot of people. There was, you know, the twins. There were uh, Amtrax. There, there, were, there were so many people in this uh, case that it was, uh, it was crazy. Um, a lot of people got time off and it's almost like they added the time on to El Chapo, but uh, that's how the the game is, and that's you know that's why a lot of people are saying that they think that El Mayo sacrificed El Chapo to you know save his son. Um, El Mayo was, if you look down to his history, he was actually a farmer all the way into his teens. When he got into his teens, when he started, you know, uh, dealing drugs and, and uh, going back and forth from California uh, to Tijuana, and he became known, and he started getting, you know, connections to the Guadalajara cartel. While he started small, he slowly worked worked his way up, and he did it like, you know, how they say, drug dealer uh, school 101. You know, he did it with the whole thing that they they teach you about you know um being very low profile not spending money on this not like he he did everything that was taught to every person that's been in the game and i i i, I hate to say it but it's it's paid off because no one no one's got him you know um he he had all the right connections and and the big big thing in this game is is who you know you know and yes he did work his way, way up but there's a lot of things that people don't don't recognize him for and what he did like while El Chapo was in prison from 1993 to 2001 who do you think ran the day-to-day -day operation it was El Mayo it was El Mayo's uh, skills of forming alliances with other groups that made the Sinaloa cartel what it is today. It was El Mayo that sent the private helicopter to pick up El Chapo, El Chapo after his escape from Puente Grande. So, you know, a lot of people say that El Mayo was often, you know, uh, credited that, uh, you know, El Chapo became who he was. Well, I would have to say, shit, you know, if I was to come to power after one of my main, you know, left, one of my main men sent me a helicopter and got me out, I, I would say, yeah, you know, but money, power, drugs changes a lot of people, even if you're the most, you know, uh, humble farmer, the, it, it changes people. And what I what I say, what I mean about that is, you know, you could be a very humble person, worked in farms, got dirty, but once that money comes in, it's almost in your head like you deserve it. it it's it's crazy. Uh, you make excuses for all the people that you hurt and harm getting that money because you feel that you deserve it. And and I have to say that. In, larger portions of this extent this this kind of power has to be uh that times a million so you know who knows if they're ever gonna catch him before he dies you know he's he's a master at it he's been doing it for years and like i said he has not been caught because he keeps a very, very low profile. And, you know, he did an interview way back, I think in 2010 with a Mexican magazine, but, you know, um, he's always said that he, f he, he takes off to the hills. You know, um, he knows the ground, he knows the rocks, he knows the water, he knows those hills. And, you know, he said it. They'll only get me if I slow down or if I get sloppy like El Chapo. Yeah, so who is El Jefe de Jefes? Who is the Chief of Chiefs? 
who is the one still calling the shots? Yes, there is. There is, they say that there is a war happening through one of uh, key players. You know, some of uh, El Chapo's son, some of uh, one of El Chapo's brother-in-law, um, one of the head guys from El Amtrax. Like, they, they, there's there's a lot going on just because of the leadership and what's going on over there of the uh, takeover of territories, because. What happens is when you when one big cartel breaks up like that, it, little ones are formed, and then if it happens again, it, it, little ones more more are formed, and it starts getting bigger and bigger to where there's more little groups than the big group, if that makes any sense, and then that's what creates all the habit because now you have that big group fighting all the little groups, and this is how it usually happens, like on the streets with the gangs. Uh, if you go to every gang article in Chicago, that gang has been fighting with the Latin Kings, being that the Latin Kings has been the biggest organized gang in Chicago, so they've been fighting everybody. And that's what's happening now with all these cartels breaking up. They're all forming their little gangs and trying to attack the bigger cartels. And time would only tell. One thing is for sure that it is getting bloodier. It is getting way way gruesome bad and it, it wasn't like this you know a couple of years back 10 20 years back it wasn't like this but it is what it is and this is why i share the story this is why i share these these videos is that hopefully you'll learn something get a laugh smile and be like man jc's got some loose screws up there <laughs> all right guys my name is jc I am wrong strong. I have a PhD in fucking up. This is why I share my videos. Stay in your lane. Give somebody a hug. Don't judge nobody. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys in the next one.